Hello everyone, thank you for joining me again. In this and my next few videos, we will be discussing bad arguments. This episode is featuring Sai, Ten, Brug, and Kate. If you groan in response, I feel your pain. Listening to Sai long enough to make this video brought on multiple headaches, but I finally got it done. We will be looking at parts of his arguments in the Refining Reason debate with Matt Dillahunty. Please leave a comment, subscribe, and click that little bell to easily find more of my content if you like what I do. Let's get this started. Presuppositionalists claim there is a God that they know through revelation. No other evidence is needed, and if you claim to be an atheist, some reply with a claim that you already know God exists. You just repress the knowledge. A typical example is from the atheist. How do you know the revealed God you believe in is real? Then the theist, I know it through scriptural revelation. How do you, being an atheist, even know if you are real? You can't say you know anything without belief in God. <sighs> These arguments can be quite frustrating, as uh, <laughs> they, they, it's just <laughs> head explosion. But yeah, so. <laughs> From Psy, we get such gems as, how do you know? Repeatedly and relentlessly. Whose reality? Mine or yours? because we have different realities, apparently, because his beliefs are different from ours. You're presupposing rationality. Yes, so are you. Uh, <laughs> that's the kind of the thing we have to do, is we have to presuppose that even supposing is worthwhile, because that's what reasoning is. I mean, what? You need to know what's ultimately real to know what's true. That's not true. You can't know what's ultimately real, because we don't have any way of testing that. We don't have any way of verifying that. But we can tell what's true through context. That's what that is. Like, how you, you can't get away from that. Even he can't get away from that. Except for, I know it because God said it in a book. Another one being, for an atheist to claim any truth, they must borrow from the theist worldview. Well, what did you borrow from before Christianity? I mean, surely truth must have existed before Christianity. Otherwise, nothing would have existed. Right? Yeah? All right. How do you know anything to be objectively real? Okay, are we are we sitting here right now? Is this happening? Am I am I talking? Can you guys hear me? I don't like. <laughs> that's such a dumb question. Because I mean, like, how could you get away from being something being objectively real? If everyone in the room is sitting at a table, you should be able to easily prove or get contextual information proving that you're in a room with other people and you're sitting at tables like this is not some hard thing to understand but again his question here is just saying that you can't you can't know it to be real because you don't believe in god well sorry sorry but that's not the way how things work not in real life anyways so uh let's look at some of his arguments from the debate let's listen to what he's got to say and we'll respond it's reasonable to believe that which is true i mean that's the very definition of reason the intellectual ability to apprehend the truth. I say it's true that God exists. Therefore, it is true that God exists. My argument is sound and the debate is over. It's true for me that God exists. Therefore, it's true that God exists. Solipsism, a theory and philosophy that your own existence is the only thing that is real or that can be known. I submit that you can't know what's ultimately real without revelation from God. How do I know what's real? The same way all of you do. Revelation from the God that all of you know exists. No one becomes a Christian and says, well, what do you know? There is a God. Is it reasonable to believe that God exists? Yes. Yes, it is. Why? Because it's true that God exists. And denial of that claim reduces one's worldview to absurdity. Why don't I present evidence? Where do you hear evidence out in the world? In the court of law. Who do you present evidence to in court? The judge. When you come up to me and say you don't believe in God, and I present you with evidence, I'm saying that you're the judge. You're not the judge. God is the judge.
pain. I mean, would you come here today and listen to a debate? It was a bottle of Dr. Pepper arguing against a bottle of Mountain Dew. You shake them up and you open them, they start to fizz. Which of those fizzes would be true? Neither. It's just fizz. If Matt's worldview is true, then our, thoughts, our, our brains are just evolved meat machines. And our thoughts are the byproduct of the chemical reactions in our evolved brains. It's brain barf. He would be fizzing atheistically, I'm fizzing theistically. And you want to know which one of those is true. And you know what? When I watch Matt's show, I agree with Matt more than I do the callers, the, atheist, uh, the Christian callers that call in. The Christians that call into a show, most of them want to make me puke. I watch the debates he's done. I, I see on YouTube where he's debating this uh, supposed to be some clergyman who denies the authority of Scripture. And people put on their mat as finally challenging the debate. I think it's garbage. It's garbage. The truth is that which corresponds to reality. You know what? I don't have any problem with that definition. But the problem is... Everything before the word but is horseshit. According to... Re truth is that which corresponds to reality. According to who? We all have different perceptions. So one of the, my favorite definition of truth used to be truth is that which corresponds to reality as perceived by God, as perceived by an absolute perceiver. Because the thing is, we're all going to have different perceptions. But I didn't like that view because I think it adds an unnecessary step. It's garbage. Why is it absurd to recognize honestly the limitations of that which has not yet been proved? Because every word out of your mouth betrays your position. Because here's my question, Matt. You're about to utter sounds into the ether. You're about to formulate words, and you're about to speak them out here. On what basis do you assume that those words mean the same thing they did five seconds ago? There is, a, there is in any situation this establishment of the burden of proof that you do not believe something until such time as it's been demonstrated to be true or likely true. Do you accept that? Well, here's the problem, Matt. When you say there's a burden of proof, you're assuming that solipsism has been solved. No, I'm not. Sure you are. Because Is it true that I have a burden of proof? Logical absolutes reflect the thinking of God. I will not put the word of God up to the, the test of the atheist. But scripture also says, be merciful to those who doubt. But this thing is, when you're doubting something, you're doubting the truth of something. You're using your reason to doubt. You're using logic to doubt. What does it require to doubt the existence of God? It requires God to doubt, to doubt the existence of God. Because you, can, <laughs> you can't make sense of any of, of, those, of those without him. I could be wrong about things I think I know. I can't be wrong about what I know. Everything anybody knows is true. By definition, knowledge is true. Knowledge is so defined you know as everything? true. Our sin demands an eternity in hell because of how good God is. Sin is not a measure of how bad you are. It's a measure of how good you're not. All of us deserve an eternity in hell. Myself included. I'm not better than anybody here. All right, this is for Sai as well. As a Christian, does your doctor not state to be kind to other human beings? Um, well, I don't know. You'd have to quote the verse.